When Jack Youngblood arrived in Los Angeles in 1971, he faced becoming the fifth wheel on a legendary defensive front. A day or so after I'm drafted, I'm thinking to myself, what are my chances of making this football team? They're the first enforcement. This is going to be short-lived. <laughs> I'm going to get a bus ticket and a brown bag, and I'll be home. I'll be back in Gainesville. In just his second season, Youngblood moved in at left end, a position he called home for a club record 201 consecutive starts with seven trips to the Pro Bowl. Jack Youngblood could rush the quarterback and take on an offensive tackle and yell the quarterback's name at the same time. Here we go, here we go now. Jim Hart was our quarterback, and Jack Youngblood's got that high-pitched southern voice. Woo! He and I would be out here, and I'd be blocking, and Jack would be going, Jimmy, 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 here I come, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. And I'm thinking to myself, how can this, this guy's got to be in great shape to rush the passer and talk at the same time. Jimmy, 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 here I come, Jimmy. Back to throw his heart. He's got five in the pattern. He throws. Intercepted by Youngblood. 45, 40, 35, 30, 15, 10, 5. He dealt me fits. I didn't match up well against Jack. Offensive tackles were no match for the hungry Youngblood. It was the city of Los Angeles that nearly swallowed him up. The furthest west I had been was Jackson, Mississippi. I don't think I'd been across the river. It was, it was culture shock. It was country come to town is what it was. You know, he dressed in cowboy boots, blue jeans. He had a little chew of tobacco in his mouth, and he, he, was, he was Jack Youngblood. Cast against the grain, his rugged play and rural charm set him apart in Tinseltown. Man, my first impressions of, of Jack Youngblood were, why is this guy playing football? He was, I mean, this big, handsome guy that all the women loved. The one thing about training camp, it was never dull, because there were always a lot of attractive women out there looking for Jack Youngblood. I always kind of thought of Jack and John Wayne as kind of like the same kind of guy, you know, that old swagger, you know, how you doing, Eric? You know, Jack Youngblood. In a sport of kings, he was the Duke. Hollywood handsome and cowboy tough. Let's get it done, let's get it done, let's get it done. Hot, hot. He led his team to seven straight division titles, but seldom any further. And Blood knew he wasn't getting any younger. We started to wonder, was it in the cards for us? Especially after the years where we, where we had, had gotten so close. What had we not done? to step up and, and be a championship type football team. In the 1979 divisional playoffs, Youngblood was caught between two Cowboys and his leg was snapped. So too, it seemed, were LA's championship hopes. I said, it's broken. I said, you need to tape this thing up. This is Dallas. He gets the pictures back about that time. He says, see here, it's broke right there. I go, well, I understand that. I said, tape it up. I can still go play. Youngblood's astonishing return inspired an upset of the Cowboys. One week later against Tampa Bay, he again put his career on the line. He played every snap and led the Rams to a shutout victory over the Buccaneers. After six years of frustration, the Rams and their hobbled hero captured their first NFC title and a glimpse of the glittering prize. I thought it was my responsibility as the captain of the team and from the standpoint of having a desire to, to go win. Even in defeat, Youngblood played with the same grit that defined his career. Some called him brave, others reckless. But his teammates were proud to call him captain. Just to have a guy like that suiting up, you know he's been wounded. You know, everybody has to step back and say, wow, that's, that's what the game's all about. And the guy you see holding the helmet, you know, with the mud all on him, you know, that's Jack Youngblood. Do I think Jack should be in the Hall of Fame? Most definitely. 